Leonis, the strongest hero is betrayed and reincarnated as an overpowered demon king after 1,000 years to take revenge. The story opens with, in the year 447, there was a huge war around the world between the six heroes and the demon lord. The demon lord's army of skeletons rushes into the battlefield to face the heroes, but the heroes have been blessed with godly powers and now have angel forms. The demon lord Leonis was sitting in his room chamber watching everything from his ball. All his strongholds have been defeated and this is their last line of defense. The skeletons manage to clap some human soldiers, but one of the heroes has the power to bring them back to life. Suddenly a huge tree-like creature appears making the demon lord angry because he recognizes it as the art sage hero who quit being human get more power. Leonis gets up and summons his staff to join the fight, but his Fenrir companion of loyal general stops him, reminding Leonis that he made a promise to the goddess of rebellion. She had entrusted him to do something when he was still human, so Leonis decided to accept defeat. He drops his staff and walks toward a door while his castle is being destroyed before entering. He promised that he would rise again in 1000 years and reclaim his throne, and so he sealed his own soul in the Grand Mausoleum. 1000 years later, we then see two girls exploring the castle ruins of Leonis. Roselia and Regina are on a mission to scout the ruins because they have reports that some monsters called Voids are building their nests there. They walk through a corridor and reach a huge door. Roselia recognizes it as the King's Mausoleum where Demon Lord Kings decide to rest, waiting for their final days. Regina tries to open it, but thinks they need to pick up something to blow it apart. Roselia then notices some writings on the door and uses her phone, which language it is, she realizes the door is alive and touches it. Suddenly the door activates and opens up. She picks up her gun and steps inside where she finds a huge crystal. She then realizes there's a person inside and decides to help him. We then see Leonis in a barren place, he sees Rosalia, the god he once made a promise to. He says that he finally has found her and she replies that it's been over 1000 years since they met. Leonis explains he couldn't do anything against the god powers given to the heroes, so he decided to seal his soul to keep his promise to her. She replies that she's happy that he still remembers it and walks away into the air. Leonis tries to stop her but she simply says she hopes to meet him again. Meanwhile, Roselia is trying to shoot the crystal to rescue Leonis, who's the person inside. He complains about the noise and wonders if it's been 1000 years already. He guesses the reincarnation ritual was successful. Leonis then notices Roselia trying to shoot the crystal. He realizes she's human and thinks she's trying to rob his grave, so he decides to show her the power of the reincarnated demon lord. He uses his magic to shatter the crystal and knock her down. He initially thinks she's a descendant of the high elf tribe, but he's wrong. He then decides to finish her by trying to rob his grave, but he stops when she asks why a kid would be locked inside the crystal. He looks at his reflections and is shocked to see his new form. He thinks the reincarnation spell failed, but he doesn't understand why because he used the spell to rebuild his body to a previous form he expected to be in his demon lord form, but he is now in his human form when he was still a hero. Yes, the demon lord is a former hero. The girl asks him why he was sealed inside the crystal and checks him out to make sure he's not hurt. She then suddenly hugs him telling him that Big Sister is there to protect him. He initially gets annoyed but eventually ends up falling fainting. He later wakes up and she gives him some cookies. He thinks that his current body is bad because he fainted from something trivial like hunger, but luckily Roselia saved him. She then asks if he's fine introducing herself as a 15-year-old student from the Holy Swordsman Rearing Institute and asks for his name. Leonis introduces himself and thinks he can use her to get information about the current world. She repeats his name sometimes and calls it cute. He gets annoyed because his name once meant chaos and terror, but now a random girl calls it cute. He then realizes that his record as the demon lord was deleted from history. She asks for his age and he replies that he's 10. She then asks if he remembers the void monsters that had taken him away but he's confused. She then explains that voids are enemies from another world and that she and her school colleagues are knights who wield swords to fight them off. Leonis is initially confused because 1000 years ago the enemies of the world were people like him, Demon Lord and the Goddess of Rebellion. Roselia then explains she and Regina were investigating these ruins because they suspect it's a void base. He realizes that she found him by coincidence but she said that the door was sealed until she touched it. He then asks her what year it is. She says they're in year 64, which confuses him. He suddenly hear a big explosion and Roselia receives a message from Regina stating she encountered large voids. Roselia immediately holds onto Leonis, stating she will protect him. An ogre void comes through the door and Roselia tries to shoot it down. He gets all annoyed there destroying his grand mausoleum and decides to use his magic to stop it, just to trip and fall flat on his face. She tells him to back down and shoots the void, but it only tickles him. Suddenly, a laser beam destroys the void's arm and shoots its body down, it's Regina and her huge cannon. 
The boy gets up and Regina changes her cannon form to shoot it in the chest. Despite being surprised to see Leonis, Regina simply tells Roselia to take away an escape while she holds the void down. The two run away and Leonis thinks nothing went according to his plan. His reincarnation spell failed and he reverted to his human form before he became a demon lord. His grand mausoleum is now infested by aliens who are destroying everything. He wants to deal with them, but he can't because the girls are there, and if he shows his power, he won't be able to use Roselia to get more information about the world. Roselia then says they're about to reach the surface, but a crystal suddenly collapses on the ground and turns into a wyvern void. This is nothing like the wyverns he's used to. Roselia tells Leonis to run away while she deals with the monster. Her gun then turns into a sword and she prepares to deal with it, but Leonis simply ignores it and starts casting his spell to destroy the monster. Roselia for some reason pushes Leonis away, telling him to run and get sliced in the gut. She lays on the floor in a pool of her blood and Leonis wonders why she did it. She says her last words, telling him to run and escape with Regina but Leonis gets closer to her. The wyvern gets closer and the second void appears. She apologizes for not protecting him and closes her eyes. Leonis holds her hand until her last breath, but thinks she's an idiot. They only kept her to gain more information, but she decided to sacrifice herself to protect him. In fact, he could have used his power to easily block the wyvern's weak attack. He wanted more information but he didn't think she had value to him anymore. However, she reminded him of Rosalia when she protected him, revealing that when Leonis was the hero, he was betrayed by the people he tried to save, that's why he became the demon lord. More voids appear and try to attack him, but his magic barrier manages to block it all. He thinks it's annoying to have his human form because he regained his emotions, the voids continue to unleash attacks. All parried away, he then turns around and summons his staff. He tells the voids that he grew attached to Rosalia's courage and decides to punish the voids for disturbing his castle. He casts a level 8 gravity spell, smashing a void with the pressure. Another void tries to attack, but he simply blocks it with his barrier and modifies it to attack the spikes. The last void starts flying away to escape, but he simply jumps and casts another level 8 fire spell to ferry it down. However, there was something he didn't expect. The void's bones remained after using the spell, something that never happened even against dragons. He thinks it's because his current mono levels are a third of what they used to. He then notices Roselia is just barely alive. He normally wouldn't care about human lives because he's the demon lord, but he still acknowledges her because she tried to protect him. He cannot use holy spells to heal her, but he can use all spells related to death. So he decides to use his power to give her life. He uses a spell that restores all her lost blood into her body, healing her wounds. Meanwhile, Regina manages to finish off the Ogre Void and tries to contact Roselia, who's still unconscious. Leonis hears it and finds it impressive that humanity's technology managed to advance that much. Roselia then finally wakes up and immediately hugs him, relieved he's safe. She then checks her wounds and doesn't know how she's fully healed, she's confused because she's sure she died. Leonis then explains he used his holy magic to heal her back, but she doesn't know what magic is. He then realizes Roselia and Regina didn't use spells to fight the voids, but they used their weapons, which was made out of advanced magic. He realizes that in the current age people can't use magic, so they use magic weapons that require no training or hard work. Still confused, Roselia asks if he used the power of a holy sword, but he doesn't understand. She explains that some holy swords have healing powers in the Excalibur Academy. She believes he can use that power and believes that's why he was abducted by a void. She then gives a whole explanation of what is holy swords basically their powers awakened by mankind to fight void 60 years ago. Humanity almost lost the war against the voids but children awaken the holy sword power to manipulate fire, wind, and others. He realizes that this power is different from the one he uses, so he decides to hide it from everyone. Regina then arrives and the girls ask what happened to the void. Leonis lies saying it disappeared while he was shaking in fear, they then decided to leave the ruins and Roselia asks Leonis to join her on her bike, which confuses him. He joins her and they drive back to the academy while Regina keeps teasing Leonis. After a long drive, Leonis has finally a view of the city and he realizes that it's the 7th Assault Garden. Things continue as they all journey to the surface, Regina and Roselia reminisce the day Roselia's parents died. On that unfortunate day, the entire mobile fortress was attacked, and all the young ones and people who couldn't fight had to go into hiding. They hid in a secured shelter, but they could still hear the noises of the battle, the sounds of the bombs, and the effect of the battle. At a point their light goes off and suddenly comes back. It isn't a surprise that the young kids are scared to comfort each other. They speak about irrelevant things and eventually they fall asleep. The next day, when the battle ends the door to the shelter opens and they see light again. They come out of their shelter to a destroyed city. Almost all the nobles who had engaged in their battle and fought died in the battle. Thinking about her parents, Roselia bends to the ground and starts crying immediately. Regina tries to console her as they both think of what next life has for them. At present they drive Leonis to the 7th mobile fortress. Leonis sees the building from afar and asks them if that is where they are going. 
they explain to them how important the fortress is to them and how they protect the place. Indeed, Roselia declares that it is the place they are protecting and she would do anything to protect the fortress. She is no longer ready to deny her identity and her duties. They eventually arrive at the fortress, which is really bigger than Leonis had expected. It is really more than that. He calls the place an island, but they correct him that their fortress is a mega float. It isn't really on the ground and they are trying to push it toward the ocean to attack the void from behind and eventually win the fight. As they have this conversation, Roselia receives a call talking about how she has sent the information about the kid to the government. Leonis had healed her when she was almost dead and even if she didn't take him, she was already under his administration. Leonis is entirely lost in the conversation. He doesn't understand what they are saying and what they mean so he asks them to explain better. They narrate to him that they think he is one of the lost children from Void's invasion and they are sure his family must have been searching for him so they will find his home for him. Roselia tells him that before he finds a home he can join the academy. As she tries to explain how the academy works to him, Regina excuses herself and asks to go to the market and get everything they need. Regina walks away from them and Roselia informs Leonis that before he can join the academy, there are some processes that he must follow, so he has to stay in that place for some tests. The tests are standard procedures that all new members who visit them go through and the academy is a place where young kids who are given great powers by the gods to defeat voids are trained in exchange for fighting and protecting the city, the academy would give them all a new life. Following her concise explanation, she asks him to enter the building and she will meet him later at the gate. She immediately zooms off with her bike and he enters the building. He is bothered by a lot of things. Sincerely, things weren't going as planned before he went into deep sleep about 1000 years ago. Humans have advanced a lot. There have been several civilizations and growths. They now have other enemies they are fighting against, which are the voids and even if he is ready to fight them. Does he think he can do well considering that he looks like a kid, to survive in that environment he needs to do more? He decides to call his maid from his former world and his best friend. He calls out for Sherry and Blackus, who are seeing him for the first time in about 1000 years. They immediately hearken to the voice of their master and they greet him. They claim they had also been in deep sleep all these years and they are really glad to see him, but Blackus asks him what is the deal about his new body. He is forced to explain that his reincarnation had failed and to return to the shape he was when he was still human. He recalls that the reason Blackus wouldn't know how he looked when he was a human hero was because he met Blackus after he had become a demon lord. While Blackus is indifferent about his new look, Sherry comments that he really looks cute and the new figure fits him. She immediately sees that he doesn't like the statement and she apologizes immediately. He calls them lowly beings and says that he has come to ask them for a favor. He has a mission for them, and they are up and ready to do whatever he wants. Looking around, they have also seen that humans have changed. They aren't the same and civilized people that they left about 1000 years ago, and Leonis admits that things have changed in such a way that he needs more information before he can make a move. He asks them to help him gather all the information they can gather around and for them to find out everything humans have been doing in anticipation of the return of the Demon Lord. Well, it seems humans haven't been doing much since they don't even know anything about the Demon Lord. He pleads with his servants to be very careful and warns them not to use any device that could expose them. Since humans are very much on their feet and they don't want to be caught, Sherry wonders what Leonis his next course of action will be and if he will follow them back to their hidden place, but he claims he isn't going. He is on a human body and the body has needs. He needs clothing, food and shelter and the best way for him to get it is to pitch with humans. He informs them that he will be staying at the academy along with the people who have reached him, so he can use that opportunity also to find more about humans and learn their newest culture. He dismisses them and they promise to take their mission seriously. After they leave, he enters the institution for his test. The first door he passes through takes into a room with long pipes around. He wonders what the room is for and what the pipes are doing there, but suddenly liquids from the pipe pour on him and wash him. However, when he enters the door, the lights increase and red light starts showing. The loud noise also comes out from the system and he is very sacred. Luckily, the light is turned off as it should and the noise stops. He leaves the door and proceeds to the next one, with no expectation of what more he will meet. However, it's the end of the process as he receives his identity card in front of that door. He looks at the plastic card, but Roselia comes behind and takes it from him. She explains the card would serve as proof of his identity until he is accepted fully by the administration. However, she has to take a record of the card so she can have a concise record for her submission. She takes a picture of the card and returns it to him. As they return to her bike, she feels a little weak and she says that she needs to rest at home before returning to the administration for her training. She reveals to him that she hasn't awakened her power and she wants to keep fighting and training until she can awake her powers. He wonders what rationale that gods could use in sharing such power if someone is courageous, as Roselia hadn't awakened her power. Regardless, she offers to take him around the environment so he can at least see the Excalibur Academy before he follows her to her dormitory. They ride around the city and he sees the happy people around. He recalls that the city is 
meant to be fighting a war and he can explain why there are so many happy people everywhere. He asks her why the city looks so peaceful, and she explains to him that only the experienced warriors are taken to the battlefield. The mobile fortresses are secured, and they ensure that voids do not attack them, which is why everyone there is peaceful. She eventually reaches Excalibur Academy, the building is so huge and it is really big. She shows him the administration and tells him that Excalibur Academy and is the central military body of the entire city and that is where all their direct commands come from. He doesn't give the kind of expression she is expecting. She expects him to be very shocked at how huge the building is, and she also tells him that everyone who sees the building for the first time is always very excited. However, what he is thinking about is much different. He wonders how to infiltrate a building like that without losing the battle. She takes him on a tour inside the building and shows him his class where he would receive all his lectures, the library with several books, the dance hall and even the bathhouse. While he could understand why they had a training room and a library, he didn't understand why a school would have a dance hall. Well, all work no play would make them tell students. She responds in the same way and acknowledges that there is a need for them to have fun when they are tired, they start walking to the door. She shows him the girls' dormitories and he also notices that all the ladies who pass beside them give great comments about how he looks. This makes Roselia tell him he would be popular. Their fun trip soon turns sour when Roselia meets a senior she dislikes. The senior had always been flirting with her and on that day he asked her what she is doing with the child and asks if her weak platoon is now babysitting children. He reminds her that if she doesn't awaken her power soon she will be sent away from the school. So he advises that she join his platoon to become his play toy and secure her space in the school. She refuses his offer and tries to walk away but he gets triggered and drags her hair. This makes Leonis angry, he uses his power to terrify the guy and he bows to Leonis' feet. The senior refuses to give up, so he brings out his weapon but another senior step into remind him the use of their regime isn't allowed in the school, and he is also trespassing by visiting the female dorm. He walks away embarrassingly and Roselia appreciates the female senior. The lady proceeds to ask about Roselia's mission and apologizes for not following her. She takes Leonis's measurement for his uniform and Roselia feels weak again. Celia rests on the tree for a while and continues to tour later, they eventually get to sell his dorm. The dorm looks much older than the other dorms Leonis has seen on his way. So she explains to him that the school is based on merit and you can only get great rooms if you are one of the most intelligent in the school. She stops by Regina's room but Regina is asleep and she takes Leonis to her room. She asks Leonis to have his bath as he does that, she asks him if he would like to join her platoon. Her platoon is weak because she doesn't have power, but she needs to seal her stay in the school. She enters the bathroom to meet him naked and he is nervous. She feels she is just a big sister to him, so she even offers to help him wash his hair with shampoo. He reluctantly accepts and as she does so, she informs him that with his healing power, every platoon will be all over him. She claims she won't be angry if he doesn't join her, and she would like them to remain friends. However, he actually intends to join her. He fears that he would only be at the mercy of other people if she is faced with danger and asks her why she really wants to be in that school when she knows she doesn't have power. In her defense, she claims she wants to be able to protect herself. Suddenly, she faints Leonis drags her closer and puts her mouth in his vein. He reveals to her that he has lied. He tells her he doesn't healing powers and only has dark powers. He tells her the real her has died in ruins. Elsewhere, Sherry and Blackus split up to quickly find information. That brings the episode to an end. Things continue, Roselia wakes up on her bed confused about what happened. Leonis explains that she collapsed due to lack of mana and he had to give her some of his. She doesn't understand what he's trying to say and asks about Leonis' real identity. He simply says that he's an ancient sorcerer who resurrected from the crystal and that he uses powers that have been already forgotten. He also shares that his sorcery can only control death and he can't really heal or revive her. Since he cannot use holy sorcery, he could only save her by raising her as an undead. She asks if he cannot use the holy sword power. Leonis reveals he used the level 10 spell named Create Elder on Death. To be fair, he wasn't even sure the spell would work. However, she came back as the strongest of all undead minions, the Vampire Queen. She gets worried about being a vampire, but Leonis explains that she lacked mana, so she had to drink some of his blood new to her vampiric impulses. She believes his story and he apologizes for not being able to properly save her. She asks if she can share her story and Leonis agrees to listen. She tells him what happened six years ago, how she lost her city to avoid attack along with her parents. She says that her parents were both holy sword users who tried their best to protect the city. However, she feels sad because she had to be in a shelter with Regina. Since then she's been training to awaken the holy sword and fight voids. She then asks him if she can still manifest the holy sword but he doesn't know about it. He simply tells her that she's now a lot stronger because of her vampire queen nature. She's still a bit worried but the mood changes when Leona's stomach makes some noise. She laughs it off and mentions that he has already spent more time in a girl's room when compared to eating. They head to the cafeteria where she asks if she can still eat normal food because she's now a vampire. Leonis replies she can because she's a high-ranking one. 
She will recover mana from eating but it takes too much time, so it's not the most efficient way to regain her strength. She asks if he has decided what he wants to order. He asks for bread because he doesn't know most of the dishes. She tells him that he must have a balanced diet but he dismisses it, mentioning undead don't need it. This strikes her down and he realizes that she's not used to the fact that she has become an undead. He apologizes to her and ends up following her suggestion. He then mentions that he has money and pulls out a gold coin. Deep down he's bragging to himself about how rich a demon lord is. Roselia asks him what he is and he tries to explain himself as a rich guy who can buy the whole restaurant. Turns out that he's a broke dude, Roselia explains real gold or money is useless in today's age because everything is bought with credits that hits him like a brick. They then heard a girl talking to two guys in the background, the guys complaining that she isn't wearing the school's uniform and tries to take advantage of the situation. When one of them grabs her, she quickly knocks them down with her wooden sword. The girl then tells them off, stating she has permission to dress like that and the guys start running. Roselia quickly runs to the girl and calls her Sakuya. She asks what happened and Sakuya explains everything. She was supposed to be in a tactical drill, but Sakuya snuck out because it was boring and decided to gamble until she got caught by those two guys. She then focuses on Leonis explaining that Elfine already mentioned him silly keeps her version stating he was abducted by voids and she saved him. Sakuya then introduces herself and shakes his hand. He quickly notices that she's someone who dedicated her whole life to the sword and wonders how much she has trained. Roselia then reveals Sakuya is her platoon's vanguard attacker and ends up paying for everyone's lunch. While eating Leonis asks Sakuya why she's dressed like that. Sakuya explains that's the traditional clothing of her homeland and a memento of her sister. Her village was attacked and destroyed by voids and she was the only survivor, so now she's training to get stronger and get her revenge. Leonis apologizes for asking about such circumstances and Sakuya explains that usually people must wear the academy's attire but since it's a memento from her sister, she somehow got special permission to wear it. After the meal, Roselia and Leonis head to the training grounds to register his holy sword. There he meets Alto the instructor in charge of his examination. She explains she will examine him to determine what type of holy sword he has. He then summons his demon lord staff and Alto questions his abilities. Leonis simply says he's a support who can do all sorts of stuff based on the situation. He then notices some robots around and asks about them. Roselia explains those robots are void simulators. In short, they can copy void combat patterns. Alt tells Leonis to fight it since it's set to the low level. He thinks a level 2 gravity spell should be enough to finish this quickly but that ends up destroying all the robots, Roselia and Alto cannot believe it. Alto questions how he crushed the robot and asks if his holy sword is really a support type. She wants to know more about it then everyone around starts looking at him. She then starts programming the void simulator to a higher level but they are interrupted by the annoying Muzel, he wants to handle the examination. Leonis says he doesn't mind but he also mocks Muzel by saying he's on the same level as the robots. The guy gets so enraged that he ends up calling his holy sword Harry Potter wand, his pet girls also call up air weapons but Silly claims that 5 on 1 isn't fair, but Muzel simply claims that his holy sword has the ability to control others as his weapon. Yet Leonis arrogantly says he will just defeat the 5 nubs. Roselia decides to join and help him falling into Muzel's plan, because he will allow her to help Leonis under one condition. If she loses, she will join his platoon and become his toy. Leonis knows that Muzel simply wants to clap Roselia and decides to take advantage of it. He accepts the condition but if Muzel loses, he must never bother Roselia again. As you know the guy is so dumb that he ends up being overconfident and accepts. Leonis tells her that he won't allow anyone to touch his girl and Roselia starts blushing. Roselia then asks Alto for a training sword, the holy sword replica made for training. After setting up their positions they decided to start. Roselia quickly dashes forward and knocks one of the girls down. She then goes for Muzel but another girl comes to block it. Leonis simply watches thinking that her raw attributes improve since she became a vampire queen. One of the other girls smashes her weapon to the ground, forcing Roselia to parry the pebbles. Muzel being the typical loser tells one of his pets to deal with Leonis while Roselia is distracted, the girl rushes forward and attacks with lightning but Leonis simply uses a low level spell to block it with his shadow and then he uses it to restrain the girl. Roselia then starts getting the advantage against the two girls she's fighting against. The third comes forward but Roselia takes her down. Roselia then decides to deal with Muzel but he simply uses his wand to stop her from moving. She's a bit confused about what's happening but he explains this is his real power, the Holy Sword of Dominion. He knocks the sword out of her hands and explains all the dirty things he will do to her later but first, he decides to deal with Leonis who's a big corner. He's still restraining the first girl but the other three got up and are surrounding him. For now with Muzel, Leonis thinks he could use a level 2 spell and wipe them out in an instant but he suddenly hears Roselia. She's talking to herself mentioning how much she wants to protect him, she then begs her holy sword to appear. Her strong desire makes a bright light appear on her hands. The light then transforms into a holy sword. Regina who is watching could not believe her eyes. 
With her holy sword Roselia manages to break free from the restraints. Muzel is clearly your loser who cannot believe what's happening. Giving Roselia the chance to rush forward, she destroys his wand in half releasing all the girls in his control without any other option, he gives up like the little loser he is. Everyone starts cheering for Roselia, including Regina who immediately hugs her. She's so happy that she managed to awaken her power and Roselia can barely believe she managed to do it. Later she thanks Leonis for helping her but he dismisses it, explaining she did it because of her duty. She's a bit confused but he simply replies that her duty is to protect her master. She doesn't understand what, she laughs it off and promises to protect him. She pats him and decides to ask him for a favor, she wants him to make her stronger and asks him to join her platoon, he quickly accepts the deal. They throw a welcoming party where Regina cooks a huge feast, but this party is also to celebrate Roselia's holy sword awakening. Elfine and Sakuya congratulate her and they mention his performance during the examination. They quickly talk about whether Roselia already named her holy sword but she dismisses it. Elfine and then tells Leonis to come to her room so she can analyze his skills and that drives the real conversation to begin, there are no more open rooms in their doors so Leonis will have to stay with someone. Regina quickly jumps into the conversation, she wants that clap session. She even promises to make him sweets every day. Sakuya also wants a piece of that despite being out most of the day, Elfine joins stating she has tons of plots in her room. Leonis has so many options but Roselia jumps in between. She considers herself his guardian therefore she will make sure he's cozy at night. The girl suspects something but Leonis mentions he'd rather stay with Roselia, not because the winter is cold but because that will allow the two of them to keep their secrets, especially because she will need to get mana from his blood. As promised, Leonis goes to Elfine's room to be examined. She uses her holy sword out of the witch to scan his data. Leonis is impressed about it but she says that she can use it for now. He is confused but she explains that she lost her holy sword powers and her capabilities are now limited. She reveals she was part of the 7th platoon, which used to be the strongest group with her as their main attacker. They would usually go on void extermination missions until 6 months ago. They were investigating some ruins and were attacked by voids by the time they realized it was a trap, it was too late. The group fell apart and she was the only survivor. She then lost most of her power and shut herself in her room but Roselia visited her so much that she accepted to join the platoon. She then finishes scanning his biological data and finds something interesting. It says that Leonis enjoys staring at plot. She tells him that being naughty isn't good. He then notices a map on her monitor and asks if he can check it. She agrees and gives him a tablet with the map. While checking it, Leonis notices the void distribution area over the last few months. He then calls forth Blackus and finds out from him that the voids have similar characteristics to the monsters the Dark Lords used against mankind. He then orders Blackus to investigate the spots presented on the map. Blackus is disappears and Sherry suddenly appears she also has a report. She found out something about humanity. They learn how to make donuts. Leonis tasted and finds it delicious. Sherry starts pulling more food from her bag and he understands that she's only been eating for the whole time. He gets a bit annoyed but she explains that she also got some information people don't know about any demon lord. They don't even know about ancient gods or the war between the dark lords and the six heroes from 1000 years ago. He asks her to continue her investigation. Sherry then mentions that Roselia became Leonis' minion. He wonders why she sounds so upset but she just ignores him while calling him a dummy. He gets annoyed mentioning Roselia is a vampire queen who can use the mysterious holy sword power. She will be their first step to reform his demon lord's army. She gets angry and says she hates him while disappearing. Meanwhile, there's a group of divers investigating the underwater ruins, they find a huge tree with a face. The tree starts calling Leona's name and attacks the divers. The story continues we learn about Leona's past as the hero. He was on a mission to defeat an evil monster being guided by a villager. The villager is pretty happy as they will be helped by Leonis, who is considered the greatest swordsman and the hero of the Holy Sword. The villager complimented Leonis' skills who simply dismissed it, mentioning his job was to defeat the Demon Lord. The two arrived at the monster's location but Leonis was confused because the spot was empty. He turned back to ask the villager where the monster was, however the villager had disappeared. Leonis then realizes this is a trap and tries to reach out for his weapon. However, some gravity magic was cast on him to restrain him. He sees three mages around him and then some soldiers also appear. The soldiers quickly grab some chains and restrain him in the air. The nobles of the kingdom didn't like Leona's power or influence so they decided to wipe him out. The soldiers quickly ran forward with their spears and stabbed Linus in the chest. He tried to resist but in the end he lost all his strength. The soldiers put him down commented on how their job is done and walked away. Minutes later a girl appears before him, she knows he can still hear her and asks him how he feels after being betrayed by the people he saved. Leonis had negative thoughts yet he couldn't resent humanity for betraying him. 
She asks what he thinks about this world, but Leonis didn't care about it because he was about to die. The girl then reveals that she wishes to rebel against the world. Leonis is confused, but she explains that she's Rosalia, the goddess of rebellion. She holds his hand promising to revive him not as a hero but as the new Dark Lord who will save the world. Leonis wakes up from that dream reminding himself that he must fulfill his promise of finding Rosalia in the current timeline. He then noticed something was wrong with his neck he was bitten. He immediately gets into Rosalia's room and orders her to get up since his minion. She immediately gets up confused about what he did. He shows her the master contract mark explaining he can simply order her around and she cannot refuse his orders. She suddenly gets flustered and asks if he can also literally order her to do clap actions, Leonis explains that he won't order her to do those kinds of things. She rests assured deciding to believe that Leonis will always be trustful. Leonis then changes the topic asking if she sucked his blood while he was asleep. She gets shy mentioning she sucked a little because she couldn't help herself in the middle of the night. Leonis replies that he doesn't mind about it because she's his minion, however she should first say something to him. She understands and apologizes to him. They're then interrupted when her phone starts ringing. Roselia picks up Elfine call and asks her the reason for the sudden call. Elfine then reports there is something strange, the 13th platoon should be investigating the seabed but they haven't returned yet. They're known for being a skilled group but there is no news yet. Elfine says she will continue investigating the case and will give her an update later. Roselia then mentions Leona's promise that he would train her and he agrees to head to the training grounds. Meanwhile, the Excalibur's academy staff is having a meeting. They're pretty worried about the 13th platoon and ask about their collected data. They find out there's a void colony in the seabed beneath the assault city. They think the voids will probably attack the city in a large group. They wonder if they couldn't get any signs before. However, they have no technology capable of detecting a void lord ahead of time. One of the staff members asks how many voids could be found in the colony, but the answer is worried several hundred if not more. They become worried because there's a huge chance that a void lord will appear in this attack. They start planning their defenses. They need to evacuate the civilians and find the void lord. One of the staff orders for the academy defenses to be tightened and orders all platoons to work on leading the civilians to safety. In the meantime Roselia is practicing her skills against two robots but it's quite easy for her, especially because they come one at a time. Leonis compliments her skills and asks her if she has someone to teach her swordsmanship. Roselia reveals that her family taught her the basics when she was young and since then she's always been practicing but her progress is now slow. Leonis then mentions that she now should be stronger because she's also a vampire queen. She can barely believe it, Leonis explains that she's not used to using the vast mana reserves on her body. He tells her that if she manages to learn how to use it, her strength will be increased by a lot. She asks for his guidance and Leonis summons his staff. He says that he will give her a more realistic opponent and casts a barrier around. He then uses a summoning spell to create several skeleton soldiers from the shadow. She's confused but he simply explains those are his lowest ranking minions and that she is free to destroy them however she wishes. She then decides to start and starts slicing the skeletons one by one. She dodges when two skeletons attack her from both sides and Leonis takes this chance to summon even more soldiers. After some minutes Leonis notices her tired and decides to stop. He returns his skeletons to the shadows and asks if she needs him to give her some mana. She says that she's fine and he compliments her skills again, he then decides to return to the door but she asks him if he wants to have a meal with her. He refuses to but his stomach makes some noise. She starts laughing and he gets annoyed with his body. Meanwhile, Sakuya was stepping out of the dorm when she noticed Black is outside. She likes his appearance so much that runs toward him. She thinks that he has a noble aura and decides to give him a name until she finds his owner. She calls him Flafumari the Black, of course Blackus hates that name but she simply ignores it thinking he likes it. She decides to warp his neck with a piece of cloth mentioning it as food inside. She then walks away mentioning they will meet again. Meanwhile inside Elfine is trying to get more data when both Regina and Sakuya get in, Sakuya is pretty high up mentioning how she just met Blackus. They then focus on the new investigation as a new group is sent to locate the Void Lord. However they haven't returned yet this was an even better group than last time. We then return to Roselia and Leonis, they're cruising through the city on her bike heading to get their lunch. We also find out that Sherry is doing her best to get information. Well, her type of information is all about getting part-time jobs in food shops and cooking lessons. The cooking teacher comes with a bowl of potatoes explaining she will be learning how to make fries. He explains the potatoes must be sliced and even pieces, but Sherry doesn't wait. She simply pulls out her knife and slices everything potatoes and bowl included. The guy is so shocked and asks what she has done, but she simply replies she did what he told her to. The owner then orders her to clean up outside where she sees Roselia and Leonis stopping by. She tries to hide herself from them while Roselia buys some goods from the shop. They then go back to the bike and ride away. Sherry is curious about where they're heading but the two later stop by an orphanage. Leonis is confused but Roselia explains that it's a restaurant and an orphanage. 
The orphans quickly step outside happy to see Roselia. She then explains that this place takes care of refugee children with nowhere to turn. Somehow Leonis can resonate a bit with these children because he also was a homeless orphan before becoming the hero. Upon getting inside Roselia apologizes because she couldn't visit them earlier due to her exams. One of the kids sneaks behind her to do something interesting but Leonis gets mad that someone is doing that to his minion. He uses his magic to attack the kid but stops when Roselia tells him that it's fine, the owner of the place comes down she's Freenia. She introduces her to Leonis explaining he's a boy she saved in the ruins. He tells her that he's also a holy swordsman which makes all the kids cling to him thinking he's amazing. Roselia then tells them that she brought some vegetables and donuts for the kids. The kids get all happy and Freenia mentions she will be preparing lunch soon. Elsewhere, the other group is investigating underneath the city and notices something wrong. At the same time Sakuya wakes up from her nap with a strange feeling, turns out that there are some vines growing inside the control room of the Assault City. The story continues, we see Leonis' memories of the past when he was still a hero. A city of the kingdom was being invaded by a group of ogres putting everyone in fear. The heroes Tyrus, Arakil, and Leonis had the duty to eliminate them, Arakil starts casting a powerful magic. However his plan is a bit twisted, he wanted to eradicate not only the monsters but also the citizens. Then Tyrus would use her power to revive the citizens, yet Leonis had another idea which is probably the reason he was later betrayed. He didn't want to see the citizens suffer, so he used his sword to cut Arakil's spell in half. Arakil was confused but Leonis, who was still 12 years old at the time, couldn't see people being eradicated and being brought back to life. He then jumped down and started to fish the ogres one by one. The citizens watched in awe as he sliced the ogres and even wrestled another one. Something was clear every citizen saw Linus as a true hero and loved him. However, the other two didn't like Leonis, especially Arakil. Back to the present, we see Arakil's monster form manage to infiltrate the underground in the Assault City. Meanwhile, in the HQ of the Assault City, there's a report that the huge tree has gone missing. They wonder if it's a void and are determined to deal with it when they find it. They then contact Elfine and allow her to explain the results of her analysis. She explains that she detected something underground in District 62. She also explains that at the same time there was a magic energy reaction. She then reveals the same occurred minutes later and after analyzing all the data she concludes it was caused by a void. Everyone starts to panic, unable to believe a void managed to infiltrate the underground facilities. The data team analyzes the new info with their previous one and explains it's true. The old man is confused and asks why their void detection machine didn't give them any signal. The analyst explains the void produced weak magic waves. Therefore the machine didn't react because it was considered a common accident but the general is still confused. How did the void infiltrate the assault city? The girl explains there are certain parts of the city structure that could allow it. Suddenly an alarm rings and the analyst explains something was detected moving in District 31. The old man is confused again asking why that thing isn't releasing magic. Elfine quickly concludes the void is limiting its power to avoid being detected. The old man rejects the possibility because voids aren't smart but Elfine bluntly asks him if they found any hints about what happened to the last investigation team. Another alarm rings this time, the report from the stock department. The report states they have found some tree roots in that section. Meanwhile, in Elfin's room Regina is worried because she cannot contact Roselia. Elfine asks if she knows where Roselia is in, Regina replies that she must be in the orphanage with Leonis. Elfine tracks them through GPS but Regina asks her if voids did really infiltrate the city. Elfine simply replies yes and tells Regina and Sakuya to stay alert. Meanwhile at the orphanage, the kids are all enjoying their lunch when one of them asks Leonis to show him his holy sword. Leonis is clearly annoyed because this stupid kid just spit on his face. However, there's a kid girl named Chisla who calms the kid down and gives Leonis her handkerchief. Leonis sees her as a kind and well-educated child but she's clearly crushing on him. She shyly calls him cool for being able to use a holy sword and quickly rushes back to her tomato land. Back at the headquarters, they manage to find some hints about what's happening. Not only did they manage to find some footsteps, but they also found a corridor full of tree roots. The men there await orders to destroy those roots, suddenly those roots start to inflate and show some sort of eyes. In the next instant, all men are attacked and they lose communication. The general now believes it's a void but wonders how it managed to get into the underground. The old man then asks why their aerial defenses are so strong, yet the underground ones are trash. The fatter here decides to panic and call for a general evacuation but the city commander isn't available to give that command. Things get worse when the analyst reveals the roots managed to cut the communication system within the city. V Fatter starts to use his iPod to hack the system and re-establishes some communication. Two guys manage to survive the last attack. However they let the Void escape, not only that but they cannot track the Void at the moment. The general freaks out because Void usually attacks non-stop but this one ran away. The analysts quickly realize the Void paved his way through the energy corridor but don't know why. Elfine quickly realizes its goal is the magic energy core that sustains the city. 
She quickly explains that if it's a Void Lord, then it will use the Magic Energy Cord to create a huge stampede. Everyone freaks out, ordering to protect the Magic Core and activate all defensive systems. However, seconds later the tree roots breach the walls and try to reach the core. The defensive system starts shooting the roots down while the troops arrive. However, the defense system is taking some losses, they quickly decided to change their priority to not only defend the core but they also order the citizens to be evacuated while everyone else prepares to face a stampede. Meanwhile at the orphanage, this disgusting kid is still insisting on seeing Leona's holy sword. Freenia tells the kids to stop because a holy sword isn't a toy but Roselia asks him to show since she's as familiar, he accepts to entertain the kids but in his own way. So he ends up summoning a mini skeleton and plays with it as if it were marionettes, however the kids find it disgusting. Meanwhile, the soldiers are still trying to deal with the roots but they stop once they reach the magic core, it quickly forces its way in and starts summoning voids. The city alarm quickly starts to ring making Roselia and Leonis rush outside, they realize a stampede is striking their city. The city's defense system activates using the reserve energy but it will take three days for them to get any external help. The generals wonder if they will survive but one of them assures the students are ready. Elfine, Sakuya, and Regina help to evacuate the citizens but the latter is still worried about Roselia. Elfine assures that Roselia should arrive there soon as she should follow the normal procedures but their focus for now is to deal with the voids in the area. The sky is filled with voids but the defensive system's machine guns start to quickly deal with them. The girls then reach a rooftop where each of them starts summoning their holy swords and attacking. Meanwhile, Leonis is watching this from afar thinking the void humanoids are quite strong. Roselia then starts to panic and returns inside, stating they must evacuate the kids. Leonis tries to follow but he's interrupted by Sherry who asks for his orders. However, Leonis doesn't understand how she managed to get to him so quickly. She tries to lie stating she didn't follow them to get info about Roselia, Leona stops carrying and tells her to protect his familiars. Sherry tries to refuse, saying she wants to protect him but he simply tells her to go away. Roselia then calls for Leona, explaining the kids are ready to evacuate. However, Leonis notices something and tells her it's dangerous outside. A dragon void is in the area and Roselia heads outside to deal with them. She summons her holy sword but Leonis notices she hasn't reached her real power as a vampire queen. When asked if she's afraid, she replies yes, but she cannot leave in fear and leave the kids to perish. He smiles and decides to summon his staff decided to not let his strongest familiar die. Two voids attack but Roselia quickly deals with them, she then notices two others burning in the air and realizes it's Leonis is doing. She asks if this is his power but he simply focuses on the next targets. More and more voids start to appear around the city, Sakuya notices some ogres and dashes in with her sword making them barbecue means meat. Regina uses her huge cannon to shoot dragons down, while Elfine uses her stuff to scout the area. Suddenly they feel the ground shaking and they notice a huge void hydra, the city defense system cannot keep up with the several voids and their weapons are destroyed. Leonis then looks at the voids and realizes it's monsters from 1000 years ago. Even the great dragons were corrupted and became voids. He quickly realizes that if they're as strong as they were back in time, he cannot use low-level spells, he tells Roselia to protect him while he casts a high-level spell. She quickly rushes ahead to deal with several voids enabling Leonis to start casting his spell. However, he doesn't really know why he's doing this. He, the great demon lord shouldn't care about the destruction of a human city. However, he cannot stay still when someone tries to challenge him and his family. A huge dragon appears in front of him and Leonis casts his level 10 spells. Several fireballs appear in the air and crash in the area. Roselia is scared because it's raining fireballs but Leonis tells her to stay still. He manages to pin the dragon down but it attacks Roselia with fire. She dodges it and Lena starts to blame his current body for his low level of power. Suddenly Blackas appears from the shadow and bites the dragon's neck. Leonis uses this chance to cast another level 10 gravity spell smashing the dragon to the floor. Roselia cannot believe she saw Leonis defeat such a huge void, yet suddenly the floor starts shaking and collapsing. The three roots appear once again and they restrain Roselia, she's slowly pulled inside the hole. Leonis tries to help her but some roots block his path, the roots then start taking some shape and call for his name. Leonis smiles and recognizes the roots as Arakiel one of the former heroes. Things continues, Leonis mentions he didn't expect to meet Arakiel 1000 years later, he summons his staff and casts his spell. Still, the tree dude doesn't fight him head on and returns underground. Leonis realizes Roselia is still alive the mark hasn't disappeared yet. Blackus comes out of the shadows to talk about Arakiel and how he's changed after his resurrection. Blackus notices the kids from the orphanage looking at Leonis, he wonders why they put themselves in danger and asks him if he has something to do with them, Leonis thinks they are afraid of his power. He approaches them, telling them to return to the shelter, but they thank him for protecting them. They beg him to rescue Roselia, surprised they aren't afraid of him, he assures them he will rescue her. He erects a barrier and summons skeleton guards to protect them. 
Leonis walks back to Blackas, who picks up the sound of Roselia's communication device, Elfine and Regina are facing off the Hydra and want Roselia's back up, but Leonis tells them that Roselia has been kidnapped. He tells Elfine to get Roselia's location using her holy sword, but she tells him to wait for their help. Leonis tells her there is no time and gives her a view of the area where Roselia was kidnapped, Elfine manages to find her location and tells Leonis. Suddenly, Elfine is about to be attacked by the Hydra, but she is protected by Sherry. Leonis while heading to Roselia's location, Blackas asks why he sent Sherry to help the humans, Leonis tries giving Blackas excuses, but Blackas isn't convinced. Leonis finally confesses to taking a slight liking to the human, and Blackas is pleased with his answer. Leonis uses his magic to break the door leading to the room where holding Roselia. They both burst into the room where they find the branch dude, Arakiel is holding Roselia hostage and Leonis tells him it's time to return his minion. Leonis launches his flame magic which burns the vines, but Arakiel regenerates quickly and asks Leonis how he's still alive. Leonis tells him he never perished, but he just sealed his soul 1000 years ago. Arakiel tells him the world has changed since then, he claims the world needs to be rebuilt along with the empty star. Leonis asks him about the empty star, Arakiel tells him he has been chosen to be a bringer of good tidings. Several eyes open from Erika's branches, making Leonis realize that Arakiel defeated the priests of the Sacred Order. Leonis calls out to Roselia and she responds to him from behind the main branch of Arakiel, she is being restrained by strong vines. While Leonis is distracted Arakiel tries to attack him, but Blackas warns him and he can dodge in time. They run around the room, dodging Arakiel's attacks, Leonis summons eyes to cut through the branches, but the monster regenerates too quickly. He tries to attack Leonis's while he's off guard, but Blackas protects him, Blackas notices their magic is becoming weaker with each second, and Leonis tells it's because they're in Arakiel's domain. Arakiel casts a spell to increase the number of spells cast at once, he then creates multiple beams of light that ricochet around the room. Leonis gets hit by a beam and tries to combine his magic attack with Blackas. However, Arakiel creates a light barrier to protect himself. Blackas tells Leonis that Arakiel has unlimited power because he's absorbing it from the mana crystal. Leonis tells Blacklist it's time to take a little risk. Meanwhile, Roselia tries to break free from the branches restraining her, but it only injures her body. Despite the pain, she refuses to give up and won't let Leonis fight alone. She summons her holy sword and tries to cut the branches, but she can't make a movement. Outside, Arakiel keeps attacking Leonis with his light magic, Leonis and Blackas combine to cast a powerful spell. Still, Arakiel creates a light magic barrier to counter it. Roselia is still struggling against vines, increasing the injuries in her body, her eyes turn red and some sorts of blades come out from her blood. The blades cut through the branches, allowing Leonis to find her precise location. He then throws her communication device covered in his blood piercing her chest, and with that Roselia finally gets free from the vines, awakening as a true vampire queen, she cuts through the branch in front of her and returns to Leonis's side. Blackus tells Leonis he needs time to recuperate and steps aside, Leonis reunites with Roselia and he praises her for mastering her vampire powers. She thanks him for supplying her with mana so she can join the fight, Arakiel heals his wounds and tells Leonis, he will crush him to dust. Root Guy casts a huge light magic with his multiple spell chanting skill, Blackas realizes the tree wants to take the whole city by casting multiple level 10 spells, but Leonis won't allow it. He tells Roselia he's going to take Arakiel down and asks for a protection, Leonis tries to draw his demon sword and Blackas asks him if he remembers what that implies. Leonis remembers the instruction from Rosalia years ago. He can only draw out the demon sword under one specific condition, to protect his kingdom, with that in mind Leonis draws the sword, declaring this land and people as his kingdom. He recites the sword's instruction and it acknowledges Leonis's decision. Arakiel tells Leonis he can't change the destiny of the world, but our MC tells him he'll rip through the fabrics of destiny with his own two hands. Leonis uses his secret sword technique, making Arakiel disappear, all the voids begin to disappear and the stampede ceases. The next day, Leonis cannot move from bed because of his sore muscles, turns out the power of the sword is overbearing for his undeveloped body. Leonis wakes up the next day with sore muscles, Roselia comes into his room, bringing him a present from the kids. She tells him that welding her holy sword consumed a lot of blood and she would like to replenish it, he teases her about her self-control, and she tells her she can have a little. However, the girls step into his room and find them in this situation, Roselia explains to them that it's just a big misunderstanding. The story continues, the city was devastated by the stampede but it's slowly being rebuilt, since the power plant was destroyed, solar panels were built to produce mana. 
Leonis tries to access the information vault, but as Spirit tells him he needs permission, Leonis is surprised that Spirit still exists and claims to be a student at the academy. Regina closes his eyes from behind and plays a game of guess who, but Linus guesses correctly. He pulls away, telling her they're in public, he asks her if she tailed him just to tease him, but she tells him she came to return something and bumped into him by accident. He tells her he came to do some research on an ancient language, he tells her he hopes the language will help him recover his memories as an excuse. She feels for him and assures him she will grant him access, she approaches the spirit and asks it to let them through. The spirit tells her she doesn't have permission, but she uses a trick to make it grant them access, Regina tells Leonis to keep her trick secret. Leonis finds out the spirit is man-made and asks Regina what happened to the original spirits, she tells him there are rumors that they lurk in force. She finds references for the ancient language in the vault and points Leonis at them, telling him he can only read the books in the vaults. They get a message from the administration inviting them to the commendation ceremony, hosted by Alteria, the imperial princess. Leonis is happy about it because he can use royalty as an excuse to ask questions about the human empire, he gets a call from Roselia, asking him where he is. He tells her he went on an errand but will meet her at the harbor, Regina leaves him in the vaults. Meanwhile, in the outskirts, a black lion called Bati tells his gang will kidnap Alteria during the ceremony, Jack agrees with him, saying they can use her to bargain for the freedom of their imprisoned brethren. Gerda is angry, the human locked them up, Elsa asks Bati if they would be able to hold up against the holy swords of the humans, Gerda starts arguing with her and Bati tries to calm them down. A stranger tells them they lack solidarity, Gerda asks her why she is mocking them and she tells him she's offering her assistance because she shares their resentment. Jack asks her if she would help them capture the princess, and she tells them she will give them powers greater than a holy sword. She brings forth a demon sword and gives Bati a great power which allows him to make his own demon sword. Jack confuses it for a holy sword but the stranger tells her it's a demon sword that can be wielded by anyone. Elsa is impressed and thinks their kidnapping attempt could be successful with such power. The stranger tells them anyone else who is strong enough will also get a demon sword. She suggests they hijack the Hyperion and kidnap the princess. Gerda says if they seal the ship they can sail straight to free their jail partners. The stranger asks them for a favor and return for the demon swords. She tells them to deliver the swordsmen to her so they can be used as a sacrifice to the goddess. They agree to her terms. Bati asks her for her, and she introduces herself as Sharnak, the witch of the Everdark forests. Meanwhile, Leonis arrives at the harbor, impressed by the battleship dock there, Leonis decides to get Roselia a gift and is impressed when the vendor tells him the elves make it. Leonis asks him about the elves, and the vendor explains the diversity of people who reside in the city, Princess Alteria stands on the battleship to greet the people gathered at the harbor. Her guard tells her she shouldn't stand too close to the edge, she apologizes telling him she was looking for someone. Roselia and the rest of the platoon meet up with Leonis, he gives her the gift he bought for her as thanks for saving his life, she thanked him for the gift, telling him it's adorable. She tells him it's time they board the ship and meet with the princess, Leonis asks about Regina, but they tell her she won't be attending the ceremony. Suddenly, a student named Fenris calls out to Roselia, asking her what she's doing at the harbor, Roselia tells her they were invited to the commendation ceremony. Fenris tells her she is busy all the time because she is on the student council, they begin to argue but Elfine breaks it up. Fenris tells Roselia she heard she awakened her holy sword and congratulates her, Leonis asks Roselia about Fenris, and she tells him they are some sort of childhood friends. Meanwhile, Bati and his gang infiltrate the ship, they take down guards and steal their faces to take their human appearance, and they commend the plan of Sharnak for working so well thus far. The ceremony begins, but Leonis sits down, looking through a copy of the history books, he notices some missing information which indicates someone was trying to hide the events of the past. Sherry appears and he asks her what she has discovered, she gives him information about the ship and he presents her with a gift which she isn't too pleased with it, she takes it anyway and disappears into the shadow world. Later in the day, it's almost time for the princess's speech, she is being led by her guards, but they are ambushed by Bati and his accomplices disguise the staff. They take the princess hostage, but she releases the master key and the pierced creature runs away, the rest of the demi-human gang surrounds the people gathered for the speech. They confiscate their phone and keep them in check with the bomb, they ask the demi-humans what they want and they ask for the release of their partners in prison, but Fenris tells them they don't negotiate with terrorists. He tells Fenris, they will be sacrificed to the goddess, Leonis tells Roselia he wants to make sure of the princess's safety, and disappears into the shadow world. Bati and his crew force princess to activate the ship and head towards the capital, she tells them they would be heading towards a cluster of voids. Bati asks her to steer around it, but Sharnak tells her to head straight at it, so the holy knights are tainted to make them all suitable as sacrifices, Bati finally sees her true intentions and tries to fight her, but she subdues him. 
The guards of the harbor notice the ships start moving and trying to stop it. The pierced creature meets with Regina, who identifies it as the royal family's carbuncle and delivers the message calling for help. She jumps back on the ship and bumps into Leonis, who seems lost. She tells him her little sister is in danger. The story continues, Regina then starts explaining to Leonis about her background plot. She introduces herself again, this time is the fourth princess of the Altrius Empire, and Alteria is her younger sister. She explains that on the day she was born an unlucky star appeared in the sky and for some reason there's a strange law for royal children who are born under that star. In short, the kid needs to either be deleted or locked up in a monastery in the mountains for the rest of their lives. Roselia's grandfather, however, was unhappy with how Regina was being treated, so he decided to take her in and that's how she became Roselia's maid and friend. She then mentions there's a chance that the assailants have taken her sister to control the ship. Leonis is confused, but she reveals the royal family are holders of the power of the spirits, and the ship's navigation system is an artificial elemental which can only be commanded by royal blood. In short, Alteria is the Hyperion itself. With that information Leonis decides to recapture the princess. He mentioned Roselia and the others should be fined, despite being held hostage in the hall. Regina gets shocked, but Leonis replies they're the ones who can do it, he thinks the carbuncle should know the way to the main bridge, and Regina lets the spirit lead their way. Meanwhile, that the party whole Fenris tries to talk to the beastman, asking how they even got there, but the wolf guy smiles, mentioning he they just used his holy sword. Elfine takes this chance to tell Roselia that she already analyzed the bomb, Roselia is a bit confused about how she did it, and Elfine explains she hid her holy sword behind the chandelier. She then reveals the bomb is a reactive type, that means that the holy sword user must send magic power to activate it, the only problem is that it cannot be neutralized, only delayed and to add more salt to the injury, she can only delay it for only one second. Roselia thinks that if they work together, they can easily deactivate the bomb, she looks around and notices a fork, she decides to poke it into her finger, making her bleed to activate her vampire queen power. Meanwhile, Regina and Leonis manage to reach the main bridge, but it's empty, while technically is filled with corpses, Leonis wonders where they took the princess. Regina then picks up Carbuncle, mentioning there's a chance where they can create a link to talk with Alteria, however, she isn't sure if she can form that link. Leonis tells her that she can do it because he believes in her. After all, she wants to protect her little sister, she returns to her relaxed state and decides to give it a try. She holds the carbuncle and concentrates trying to talk to the princess, the princess replies, asking who Regina is. She lies about her identity, mentioning she also can use spirit power and asks where the princess is. The princess simply means she's being taken away and begs Regina to focus on saving the people inside the ship instead. The princess then mentions the terrorists have set the course of Hyperion to avoid Black Reef, and reveals their only way to stop the ships from reaching this destination is by taking the carbuncle to the bridge. Regina then explains everything to Leonis, who immediately asks her where the princess is. Regina reveals Alteria's location, but is worried because if they choose to save her, everyone else will be left alone to their destiny. However, Leonis simply tells her to stop the ship because he will save the princess, she refuses to let him go alone because he's just a child. Leonis ignores her words and uses magic to destroy the window. He tells her that he's a lot stronger than she thinks, so they should focus on their missions, he jumps down while Regina tells him to save his sister. Meanwhile, at the party hall, we see that Roselia is trying to use her vampire powers to control her blood, she manages to create a thin line of blood all the way to the guy who's controlling the bomb. She tells Elfine to prepare herself to delay the bomb, however, Fenris never shuts up and starts blabbering toward the wolf guy, the wolf dude gets as annoyed and threatens to slice her neck off, when suddenly Sakuya somehow managed to free herself and drop the plate. The terrorists cannot understand how this chick is still eating some bread and asks how she got rid of the ropes. She simply replies she used the knife on the table, wolf guy gets annoyed and passed toward her, but ogre girl reasons that Sakuya aura is quite intense. Once again, Fenris gets up and opens her mouth Roselia uses this opportunity to control her blood again and prepare for their attacks. The wolf dude doesn't wait, he attacks Fenris, who somehow manages to dodge, pulls out some judo moves and restrains the guy on the floor, wolf guy isn't happy about it and tells the other dude to blow the apple. Elfine uses her ball to delay the spell, enabling Roselia to use her blood and destroy the guy's wand, Sakuya follows up by pinning Ogre Girl against the table, and Fenris summons her ice wolves to freeze the wolf dude. Roselia takes this chance to summon her holy sword to attack the guy and finally destroy the apple. However, she has some complaints about how Fenris almost ruined their plan, everyone quickly gets their devices but there's no signal, and somehow the atmosphere feels weird. They're checked through the window and see how close they are to avoid reef, Void start boarding the ship and attack them, everyone knows their tasks. Elfine and Roselia will help the guests get to safety while Fenris and Sakuya defeat the monsters, Roselia suddenly hears Leonis's voice, but she's confused because she doesn't see him. 
He explains that he's using the souvenir he gave her to create a telepathy channel with her. He then reveals that Regina is heading to the bridge, but it's too dangerous for her to go alone, so he asks Roselia to help her. Meanwhile, Regina is literally surrounded by voids, but Roselia manages to arrive and rescue her. The things in the party hall initially calm down, until a powerful void joins the fun. Fenris's ice wolves can't do anything to him, Elfine tells them to hold off until help comes, but Sakuya refuses to, claiming she will deal with the big boy. The girls take down the weaker voids and retreat to another room, she then activates her true power of the dark caliber demon sword, turning the monster into ground squid. The other two finally manage to reach the bridge, and Roselia says she will cover Regina's back. Regina sits down, accesses the system, and inputs the code given by the princess, turns out it's the name of the star, Regina was born. Alteria never met Regina, but she didn't want to ever forget that she had an older sister. In her thoughts, Regina thanks her sister and tries to take control of the ship system. In the meantime, the princess is almost being taken away on a plane by Sharnak. Alteria notices the chopper managed to turn away and is happy that everyone is safe. Sharnak tries to take off, but somehow the chopper is being pulled down, she suddenly sees the voids guarding the area being wiped out by fireballs. She looks forward and sees a little boy, asking if she thought she could get away. Back on the ship, Elfine and the rest are surrounded by voids. Kids start to cry, especially because Elfine has no more bullets to fire. One of the girls tells the rest to relax, because Leonis will somehow save them. The monster is prepared to attack, but they're suddenly sliced into pieces. It's Sherry, who also gets the chance to get a snack and disappears from the shadows. She simply mentions that this is the payment for putting their faith in her master. Meanwhile, Sharnak steps outside and asks who Leonis is, he replies that she will pay for the crime of messing with his kingdom and introduces himself as the Demon Lord. She gets annoyed calling him just a kid, mocking the name of Demon Lord, she uses a fire spell to attack, but Leonis easily blocks it, calling it disappointing. Sharnak cannot believe her eyes mentioning he just used the secret art of the legendary Demon Lord, Leonis confirms it and uses his shadows to restrain her. He questions her objective, to which she replies to create a demon sword, she then mentions gaining the favor of the goddess, making Leonis confused. He claims that gods perished 1000 years ago and asks for its name, but swords come out of Sharnak's body, just when she's about to reveal the goddess name. Leonis is confused because that was the sword of annihilation, Sharnak's body suddenly turns into a big monster, able to summon more voids. He quickly remembers that the sword was given to him by the gods when he was a hero to kill demon lords. However, he believed that he destroyed the sword after becoming the demon lord, he attacks it with a void with fire, but the void absorbs the attack and step. The void then suddenly disappears and appears a second later on top of him, Leonis manages to dodge but notices the smaller voids are trying to take the princess. He destroys them but enables the huge void to attack him, however, Regina who's controlling the ship, watches everything from the surveillance camera and activates the defense system. The ship starts shooting the void with not only bullets but also missiles, one of the missiles Roselia inside, who came to help him, more voids are summoned, and Leonis asks Roselia to give him some time. She cuts her own flesh to create some blades and deals with every small void around, Leonis uses this chance to pull out his demon sword and uses his strongest attack to vanish the void lord away. In the aftermath, Roselia, Sakuya, Elfine and Fenris are commended by the princess for their efforts to protect everyone. Alteria however, notices Leonis is missing, Roselia explains he's recovering from his injuries and the princess tells her to thank him, along with the girl who can use spirit magic. Meanwhile, Leonis is lying on his bed, feeling sore when Regina steps in, she asks how he's feeling and mentions she prepared some apple pie for him. She mentions she will feed him some, but he rejects it, she then decides to reward him for his effort with a little peck. Leonis gets embarrassed and Regina tells him to keep it a secret from Roselia. Although returning to the island of the Demi-Humans, they were being invaded by the Imperial Army since they had conspired against their princess, so the rest of the Demi-Humans planned to escape, although it was already too late since the Royal Guard was about to arrest them surrounding them. And asking them, let them drop their weapons in addition to warning them that they are facing users with sacred swords, so the hand-to-hand -hand fight does not even make sense. Yet a strange spell was activated in front of them where it would petrify the real soldiers. So we quickly see the culprit, although the demi-humans did not seem to know him, but in reality it was Leonis who ordered them to kneel before his presence and introduced himself before them as Spad Dis, the demon king himself, who is the legitimate ruler of this world. So he offered them to be his subordinates, of course, unless that they do not want to be eliminated by humans, which the demi-humans accepted, as they had no other options. So Leonis created a dungeon with his magic, which is not visible to humans, so they could hide for the moment while they sharpened their fangs. Although at that moment, a strange, sound came from the demon king being his cell phone and when answering the call, we heard Rizzle calling him Leo and that she is very worried about him to which the demon king simply plays dumb and retreats into the shadows, leaving the demi-human speechless. 
Even so, we see at that moment Rizal who was watching the crows through his window and upon seeing the animals. He remembered that Leonis told him that they belong to the kingdom of the night, so they gather under the nearest vampire all to increase their power. But Rizal when she entered Leonis' room, she found a stranger, so she rubbed her eyes. So she took it as a simple illusion, but she was still worried about Leonis, since he was not answering her calls, so she decided to go, take a bath and then go to look for him. Although at that moment, Leonis appears in his room using the skill between the shadows, so he went directly with Rizal who for his bad luck or good luck, was with little clothing, so they both ended up being embarrassed and even more so when Rel Lina entered and badly. He understood the situation, but before saying a word, they asked him to shut up and then enjoy some food together, but Rizal no longer liked that Leo eats so few vegetables, since he could get sick. Although the boy promised to eat them later, but deep down, he felt strange since it was strange for him that others cared so much about his health, but the crows kept bothering his home, which Reyna realized and thought that they could be a big problem. So it wouldn't hurt to take a few shots, although Rizalia he tried to calm her down, since he felt that the crows were quite cute and did not deserve that ending. Although Regina said that there are rumors of that house where, in the past, it was inhabited by ghosts, so they should get rid of the crows. In addition, there are even more recent rumors. Of a ghostly black dog and a maid who appears in the house at night, so Rizal remembered what he saw recently, claiming that he saw her in Leonis's room and that she had short black hair, which made Leonis almost choking. Since he knows that they are talking about Sherry and he simply said that it is impossible for it to be true, although, although deep down, he felt a little angry since his maid was being very careless, although at that moment, Rizal wanted to know why he was away from home, for so long to which Leonis had to lie, saying that he practiced new secret techniques, since he wanted to improve for Rysila due to all the effort she makes for him, which almost made the young woman blush. While Rayina assured that Fenris would be a strong opponent since they will soon have to fight against her, but she was practicing a great strategy last night which motivated Rizal. After all, it was her first exercise with her holy sword. She wanted to give her best, so we went directly to that exercise where she and Leonis tried to pass stopping the trap, arrows, and recovering the first flag. So they had quickly won the first team by eliminating one of the five flags where Teresa and the children from the restaurant cheered her on from afar. And she was also observed by the higher-ups, who wanted to see the potential of the new students. Where we see that the end formed a group with Regina to protect his flag and thanks to the weights of the end, he was able to locate the enemies and Reyna having the information could shoot without risking much. But not everything would be simple since it was already she faced. Fenris's ice wolves, Although she was unsuccessful, she had to flee a strategy that the higher-ups applauded, since, if an enemy is very powerful, it is best to drive it away in a group but to Rysila's carelessness. One of the wolves would manage to reach her reaching her biting her leg. So she quickly froze leaving a mocking Fenris before her. Who said he knew that she would go for his flag. Although Rizal asked her to hold back with her wolves since her bites were too painful, but Fenar made sure that she is only using a tenth of her power. Yet Rizal did not understand why she was defending, since the flags do not usually defend themselves. Rather, they go straight for the others to which the blonde simply said that she was doing it, since she knew that she would come and she wanted to fix it. Things with her, although Rizal thanked her since thanks to her bad movement, Sakuya will be able to go for the other flags, but Fenris had everything covered since they had managed to make her appear right in front of them because of her ice wolves, which took her even Fenris, who was happy that they only have to worry about Reina and, in the end, such a strategy impressed Leonis who, despite knowing that he has a bad character, he did not deny his great intelligence. Yet Fenris was obsessed with fighting, so she challenged Rizal acting his sacred weapon with powerful ice fists. So Rizal quickly asked Leo to take care of Fenris's friend. Ka did not hesitate to attack his enemy, but Rizal continued to insist that he had to protect his main flag, although this did not matter to him the blonde who only wanted revenge, so Rysila accepted the challenge, although after receiving a push, she knew that it would not be easy, and even less so, when her friend threw two ice wolves towards her extremities to leave her without any movement while Leo dodged. The arrows of her. The enemy took the opportunity to use his power of shadows to immobilize and suffocate his enemy who was quickly considered eliminated by the official system, but Rizal at that moment knew that he could not surrender as you enter. He revealed that he always admired Fenris and his power of ice. But at that moment he decided to end the battle by hitting and destroying the sacred weapon of the blonde whom the system quickly decided to eliminate. But this made Leonis happy who could see his right hand, which had become extremely powerful. Something that surprised the great commanders, even the old man, washed the queen's equipment since without having experience in the tournament, they ended up being the winners. But in a change of scenes we see how our lucky Leonis is being bathed by the girls, because he is not yet 10 years old and as a rule of thumb, the school must be taken care of by a tutor until that age. At that moment we were shown a sword which a guy admitted that Sharn gave his best attempt, 
but it was not the right one for the mission, but that mysterious guy was the very lord of the void Nefs who fed a luminous rock, where Nefs assured that his goddess was there who would soon wake up, but at the same time we see a mysterious kingdom which seemed to have been hidden, but returning with the young people, they were recruited by Grey, since their satellites observed a strange city. Although Rizzle seemed to recognize it since it was the third garden of the assault, but to his surprise, it appeared out of nowhere. So it is very likely that the voids are responsible, not to mention that the emergency alarm was activated more than once. So it is likely that there are still some survivors in the city, but Degis believes it is due to a machine error, but to be sure he asked the boys to explore it, since it is likely that they will find some survivors. This being their mission permission to eliminate any boy, but if they encounter a swarm, they have the order to retreat. Even so, the end wanted to know why they were given that mission, but the instructor simply said that it was the director's decision. Even so, the end said that Rysila was a survivor of the third garden, so he did not want her to go this to avoid old traumas, but Rizal did not want to evade his duty, so he did not deny going, but he did ask that Leonis not go due to his young age, still, Leonis asked him to trust him, since he is also part of his platoon, which Rizal already ended up accepting promising that he would take care of him no matter what so, with the mission accepted, a large helicopter would pick them up. Even so, Leones had many doubts since in that ancient city had activated a mark of the sacred order, something that he discussed with his subordinates. But Blas did not believe it was possible since it had not been activated for 1000 years. So his personal mission would be to find the person responsible for activating the mark and, while Blas was left in charge to take care of the city, Sherry was assigned to go with Leonis. Although changing the subject, Leonis wanted to know where Blas was going so elegant, but he responded that it was a gift from a samurai to which the protagonist knew that it was from Sakuya. Now they quickly left for their mission, where, upon seeing the light of the sun, the end recommended them to sleep a little, since the trip would be long and Rayina offered her legs to sleep to Leonis, who would be arrested by Rizal since she was jealous and assured that he should use his legs now that she was his guardian, but Queen forcibly put him to bed since she would take the opportunity to clean the ears of the young man who, with no other option, had to fall asleep. Remembering the past, with his queen, Rosalia, where he cleaned himself his bones, ensuring that it is dangerous not to do so, but she continued talking about her short time since she would soon leave the afterlife. Even so, she asked him not to forget her since 1000 years in the future. She would reincarnate something that the demon king did not understand and that after that time he would never stop searching for her that she will not stop doing it either. So the demon king swore to do it, but Rosalia. Not only did she want that promise, since she also wanted him to love her, she does become another when reincarnated, although Leonis woke up at that moment, seeing Rosalia's face without knowing where he was there. But Regina told him that he fell asleep and they almost reached their destination, which was the third garden and without any further problems they were able to land there. But at first glance it didn't seem like anyone was living in that place, but they still had a mission so that Rizal and Leonis would go to the center field, while the others would be in charge of finding the rescue signal. But once they left Leone contacted Sherry since he needed her to take care of his friends, but halfway there Rayina recognized a place where she used to be. A cafeteria where he always went with his family but at that moment lightning caused a large pole to fall on Rizal. This enormous monster being the cause of everything. But at the same time, from the heights they show us a little of the past about what happened minutes before our protagonists arrive where someone appears as the Terminator, this being an elf girl called Ayur who does not know where she is, but she can recognize that it is her world, although when he touches the ground, he knows that 1000 years have already passed, and perhaps that is why there are no trees, grass or good air in the environment. But although there were no signs of life, there were some beautiful clothes, so he proceeded to try them on while he thought about what direction to take next. She didn't expect that horrendous world at all, but in the distance she begins to see a strange ship, so she calls it a flying saucer. Although someone behind her reveals that it is actually a helicopter and introduces herself as Nefs, who is the master of the void and the hero of the elves, was not expected to be in a place like that, yet this does not seem to matter to Yur, since he believes that he is responsible for having destroyed his entire planet and quickly threatens him, although Nef simply changed his topic, since she wanted to know why they sent her, hoping that it was not because of the destruction of the goddess's container, to which the elven heroine immediately asked if he was asking that, since he was the caretaker of the container. Although, when Nefs did not want to answer his question, he quickly launched himself towards him, but to his surprise, he ended up failing since the Lord of the Void moved too fast and to his surprise, a strange exterminating angel appeared behind him with bad intentions. But here comes the small glimpse into the past and we return to the present where this same exterminating angel was trying to kill Rizal, who was trapped with a large pole and as the angel was about to kill her Leonis used his shadow magic to get her to safety as quickly as possible, preventing her friend from fall in battle 
but this would leave him alone against the monster who used enormous magical power, but was no match for the defense of Leonis, who did not hesitate to defend himself by making his enemy retreat minimally. But even so Leo knew that his protection could nullify the magic by which was a dangerous Boyd to face, but still this did not intimidate our young prodigy, who assured the angel that he is about to see what true great magic is, but from a distance his companions saw him who began to wonder about Leonis and Rizal, so they went straight to the battlefield in case they needed any type of reinforcement, but in reality, Leonis was facing the Boyd alone, who did not stop attacking him, but Leonis would not be left behind. Invoking his gravitational power on him managing to make him fall to the ground, but the monster being able to cancel the magic would not fall so easily. So the boy tried again but this time with even more magical power, since it will not allow a simple void to compare with it. And when we see that the angel began to suffer Leonis invoked a great exterminator ray which without much trouble, finished off his enemy. So Leonis ran towards his companion, whom he had protected with complete success, but even so, when he met with her, he could see that she was not well at all. When Rizal began to having trouble getting up but still asked her to be careful, since she had just suffered a big wound and even though she is the vampire queen, her body is mortal. So it will take time for her to recover, which she understood immediately. But she still apologized already, which was not at all useful in combat, but Leon Ice did not care about this and planned to help Rizal by hiding her power. Since with her in poor condition, it would be best to avoid any unnecessary fight, a fight that apparently would be immediately when she could see some strange specters which were approaching them. But before Leo did anything Rizal asked him to calm down for a second, as he could recognize their shields being those of the royal family, where one of these being the ancient crystal knight named William Richmond saluted to Rizal who remembered her face since when she was little he worked for her father, so William was happy to know that she is fine, stating that she is now a spirit and they have come to them to talk which Leo was not worried about, since he recognizes that in combat zones, where souls with strong attachments to a purpose usually end up as wandering spirits since 1000 years ago. In the past, many ghosts of his great army used to appear William ended up, revealing that he sent him the message of help and since he no longer they are human, it was likely that no one would come for them, but rejoicing at their good luck. He took the opportunity to warn the young people that, if they continue at this pace, the tragedy that happened six years ago in the past, which killed everyone on the ship, would happen again at any time. Moments since boy stampedes were preparing to attack the seventh garden this, because a new lord of the void has appeared in that world, but Leonis quickly knew that perhaps they are lying since in the past, when the Lord of the Void should have appeared, he never appeared so it does not make sense that the prophecies come true 1000 years in the future, but still that does not explain how simple humans know about the existence of such a being. But William continued his talk where he assured him that the Lord of the Void had joined the magical circuit of the city, so he is the cause of it. Moving at that precise moment, so Rizal very worried knew that she had to report this immediately since her home is in danger, but Leo did not know what to do since the people might call them crazy if they say they talk to some spirits, so he tried to calm Rizal, who, despite being hurt, wanted to warn everyone, but Leo already knew that first, he had to take him to a quiet place which William quickly offered. There was no problem with them going to the castle. Besides, they had already called a car, but it seemed strange to Rizal that a ghost could drive a car. Although Leo reminded him that it is likely that this car has technology which must have something of magic, so it wouldn't be too crazy if they could drive them. Although Leonis wanted to go much faster, so he summoned his faithful corsals, which were skeletons of horses. Who would pull the car so that Rysila could get there as quickly as possible to rest, but at the same time, for a while, her friends were looking for the boys, since they hadn't seen them in a long time. When Sequoia stopped them, the girls were happy that there was a survivor, but when they saw her armed and eager to fight, Sequoia asked to be allowed to fight invoking her sacred sword, which Ayur did not know, so she assumed that they were friends of the Lord of the Void, although the girls quickly explained to her that they do not know what they are talking about, which ended up being Enforcer, since she felt that they were treating her like a fool. So she went straight to the combat where Seek already. He knew how to respond in the same way, even though he was superior by almost cutting his neck, but Sequoia stopped since he knew that it was not fair to fight against someone who was injured, which we see is true when the heroine's back turned red. But in turn Nefs worshipped, his beautiful queen, who would soon wake up. As long as he continues to give her power, but returning to Rizal she little by little felt better but still had a strong need to taste some of Leonis's blood which she had no problem with to give him a little. But when Rizal pounced on him, she began to suck the blood of the young man more than necessary. Even though he knew that Rizal was going too far, he had no problem letting her eat but when his transmitter rang, he wanted the end to know if they were okay. He quickly stopped eating to inform his friends that they were okay, but it may take some time since they will explore an area. Maybe the king of the Boyds is living in that city, something that he couldn't understand at the end. 
So Riss admitted that it is likely that the interference of the entire magical circuit of the ship is caused by King Boy. So they will look for evidence that it is true they could end the voids from the root, but in the end he asked him for some time, since there was a wounded survivor and they had to heal him, which the boys could not understand. So they agreed to get together when they finished exploring and their friends to heal. The survivor by hanging Rizzle wanted to continue where she left off, since she was still very hungry, but Leonis stopped her since he had a gift for her. This being a large red dress, which, in reality Leo explained to her that it is the highest equipment that is given to a skilled, swordsman. In addition to the fact that her dress converts the magic of the Vampire Queen into explosive physical strength, but the disadvantage is that it consumes a lot of magic which was also stored in the user's body. But all this made Rizzle happy, since he knew that in reality he gave her weapons because he wants to take care of her, but Leonis quickly became embarrassed, assuring that it is a gift that is always given. He also gave her some cute skeleton pendants, which Rizzle really liked, but Leo had to stop, since he didn't tolerate, compliments well. At that moment, his friends were trying to heal Ayura's body, although the end never ceased to surprise him since even wounded. She was able to confront Sakuya who quickly appeared with clothes similar to what she had to introduce herself as Sakuya. So the elf, without any choice, introduced herself as Ayur, but Queen was more interested in knowing why she tried to attack them recently. Although the young woman elf claimed that the enemy of the world the same one that controls the monsters had recently attacked her, so she believed they were her friends at that time. The end searched for her name in the database, but there was no Yur in the third garden. What the end asked? Who was? Although the elf returned the question, so the end revealed to her that they are the seventh garden and they came to investigate that city, which was destroyed six years ago. So Yur learned that the prophecy was real. And humans ruled the world when Ayur ate her stomach revealed her hunger, so a kind Sakuya did not hesitate to share some of her food, while Ayur ate Sherry watched from the shadows recognizing the elf as she was a disciple of the sixth hero Shadaloo. Even so, Sherry did not understand what someone from 1000 years ago in the past was doing in the present. Another angel informed Nefs that an angel had been exterminated, but he still did not give it importance, since he had work to do in turn. When Rizal returned to his home, he couldn't help but feel sad and when they entered the castle Leo couldn't help but sit on a chair remembering his old throne and in order not to lose the habit. Leonis took out a bone to start cleaning it remembering the days he cleaned his own, while Rysila continued, exploring her old home and couldn't help, but shed some tears when she went to her father's room. Since there was a book that he always read to her. Even so, the spirits used some of their power to renew the entire room, since they wanted Rysila. Remember the beautiful moments with your father when he read about old stories such as the Demon King, who only left the earth in darkness, but unfortunately for him he did not believe in the end of the story, since someone so powerful could not end that way. But a voice quickly interrupts Rizal who, upon seeing an F, is happy and asks him if he is a survivor, but he simply becomes depressed since they confused him with a dirty human, something that would not go unnoticed, so the human he had just met would soon be silenced to the bone, but when Leo heard his friend scream, he ran towards Rizal, who simply didn't seem to react and a great flame would soon consume her if she didn't wake. In that fraction of a moment, Rizal already began to remember the past, where she was just a child and faced her father, since she did not want to hide and wanted to go straight to battle. Even so, her father promised her that when she is even older, she will be able to do so. But at the moment it is his and his family's duty to protect the kingdom and although he noticed his daughter's sadness, he wanted to make her feel better by telling her about his story about the Demon King, that he read so much to her in the past. Where he will reveal that his book may be something real and at some point in the story, it returns to attack them all, whether in the form of a demon or voids. So perhaps they are in that same story, but when Rizal was able to regain consciousness and wake up, he only observed three mysterious beings of the which we don't know anything about, but Nefs on the other side was wondering if maybe he got out of hand since he had used the magic of the third emperor, which was even useful to quickly eliminate titans, but when the smoke disappeared and behind it, there were three specters Ataltico wondered where such aberrations came from, but Raycel no longer seemed to be scared and one of them congratulated her for surviving such an attack. Although the second specter says that it could have been better since she ended up fainting for a few seconds, but the third specter assured her that she has nothing to fear since they would protect her. Even so, Nifa was surprised since she thought she was facing a simple human but seeing her control of the undead. She decided to get serious and use her fire magic which could not be stopped with easily, but when Leonis appeared he was able to dodge it very easily and even redirected it towards Nefs, who was completely burned but Leonis seeing it well thinks he went a bit too far and regrets it, since he wanted to ask him a couple of questions, even so, Rizal did not understand anything and asked for the three specters in front of him. 
So Leo explained to him that the amulet he gave him was actually the home of those three skeletons which were very polite, presenting themselves as Aelas the Swordsman of Hades, the Master of Hell and F. Fiskar, the Sorcerer of Hell. Underworld which together made up the glorious lords who quickly began to fight since each one believed that he was better than the other or stronger and more necessary than the other. But the protagonist saw him from a distance where Rizzle joked that they got along. Well, Leonis before he scolded them saw that it was normal to return his spell. He saw that Neff seemed to have received no damage, while he congratulated him since a normal human upon returning. His spell would have turned into ashes instantly, but Leone simply stood open-mouthed that it was impossible to survive such an attack. Yet Neffs asked him why that face. After all, an attack is weak, as that would never have an effect on someone like him, while he cast another fire spell which Leonis decided to stop, which he managed to do with. It is extremely easy to the point of freezing the floor where Nephi's was while he was wondering how this is possible, but Leonis would not allow any more disrespect. So he began to ask questions like what is he doing in that place, but when he felt a strong tremor that shook everything. The ship Nefs began to laugh since his plan would soon flourish, telling that the Saint Tiars had just fulfilled her sacrifice, but Leonis could not recognize that name. So he asked him what he was referring to, which Nefs had no problem, saying that the saint is a container of the goddess who has just been resurrected. Thanks to him, while a portal appeared behind Nefs who said that his duty had just ended in that world and while he was escaping Leonis told him that it was useless to fight. But the young man would not let him. He escaped by sending his shadow hands after him, but Neff simply undid them finishing his sentence with that. It is impossible to escape the fate of the goddess and her destruction as she calmly disappeared. Yet Rizzle wanted to know who he was or what goddess he was referring to, but that the young man also did not have much information apart from a slight memory from 1000 years ago in the past, where he remembers that he saw her, but for a very short time calling her Le Fay's Razor, who is basically the demon god of the underworld and together with the god of revenge, they have Rael, been on the powerful stairs of the gods called Hashima many times, but Leo suspects that perhaps the goddess Nefs refers to as perhaps Rosalia, since her prophecy would be after 1000 years, but after feeling, another earthquake and seeing the symbol of the apostles in the sky, which is a sign that humanity was faithful to the gods Leo, begins to have a bad feeling. So he recommends that Millis escape somewhere immediately, which Leo hears, but while they were escaping Rizzle sees a strange being which begins to emerge. But William appears before them who informs that this void is the one they warned would soon be released. So as it was too late, they begged the princess to escape, since, as we can see, this will not happen. He was weak, nor was he alone to defend himself. Although upon seeing him, he knew that it was actually in the sanctuary of the apostles and the giant boy in front of them was actually one of the great of six heroes being Eris resurrected and in the distance Reyna could see to the big boy. So he immediately reported the large amount, although this made him immediately call Rizal, who seemed not to answer and Sakuya at that moment, gave some food to Ayur, since she had to leave immediately so without wasting any time they sent a missile from their control center to the sky to send a distress signal since a new and powerful void had appeared, bringing with it a huge amount of voids but Rizzle. I don't know what he would do with his arms crossed. She activated her holy weapon to begin fighting against the entire wave of voices and, although her friends could not do the same since they had orders to stay safe, if they found any void, the end knew that it would be impossible to follow those rules. Since the number of enemies, it's ridiculous, so they planned how to save their friends and escape together. But when the monsters appeared they had to fight immediately, which Ayur could see with her own eyes to simply apologize for failing since the goddess had been resurrected and there was nothing to do. But at that moment Rizal continued fighting and although he could hear these monsters recovering in a second, even the glorious lords, despite each of their attacks, could not avoid this ridiculous regeneration. So they wondered what to do. But such a problem was not only for them, since both Reina and Sakuya could not do any Raskula to them, so the end had to scan them. But when Leonis was fighting, he noticed that if he attacked him directly to the head they would never regenerate again. So he reported it immediately, but the end she was not far behind, since she was able to tell the same thing to her companions who attacked that area directly, but Leonis remembered that the power of such a goddess was to revive. So this is the main reason why those voids have something of the same. That she was, but with this secret revealed, the voids began to be almost ineffective, at least for our group of brave protagonists. Even so, the lions could not stop seeing Tenaris since no matter what happens, they will have to fight her. 
But when one of the spheres that the end sent to explore found vehicles to escape the girls went straight towards them and although Ayur did not seem to be fully recovered, she still went with her new friends in turn. The lords could not believe that they have so many enemies to defeat, but then that's what war is about, so they were right to face their enemies which Rizal and Leo did not stop facing, and when Leo saw Tenaris again, he promised that he would not let the whole world be destroyed a second time, so he pointed his staff at him to invoke a spell called Alsum, which was the representation of destruction in person, something that the closer he got to Tenaris the more we could see how she was burned. By the great power, but despite everything it quickly began. To regenerate as if nothing had happened to her something that Leo did not like very much after all, Alsum was a level 10 spell, but when Tenaris began to recite a strong spell, Rizal noticed that both Lord Das and Leone approached to protect her heiress didn't seem to be playing by invoking a great shower of crimson meteorites towards his enemies and from the distance Ayur was able to recognize that great spell, which was level 11, and both the girls in the distance were wondering what was happening, but they didn't have time to distractions. Since they had to hack the ship to be able to use them and when the spell stopped, we see that nothing happened to the protagonists, but I knew that they should end this immediately. So Leonis makes sure that if she protected him, she could end Tyarista a single blow, and the Lord Das would not be left behind promising to give their lives for their lord and without any other options. Rizal used some of his blood to use all the power of the Vampire Queen and, together with the Lord Das, he was able to put an end to many voids, giving him a great advantage to Leonis who did not hesitate to jump towards danger to position himself in front of the enemy who was once a great hero but in the present fell into nothingness and would have to be destroyed with his own hands. So with his dark sword called Din Slave proposed to cut the great boy in two, but before he could use Din Slave, he quickly stopped and the boy began to speak asking if they want to use his sword to destroy it. But to Leona's surprise it was Rosalia's voice that sounded, but when he saw the big boy again, he was convinced that it was impossible. So he finished launching the attack, which then transformed into swords which they shot at everyone in the area damaging both the voids and Rizal and Leonis himself, which was not critically injured and then collapsed after being crossed, and as if the void was not enough, he planned to once again invoke a grade 11 spell, but as Rizal knew what could happen his eyes quickly transformed her invoking the suit that Leo gave her. He gave a gift and then confronted Eris with his sword, who, to everyone's surprise, would end up injured by his attack, to which the lords would not be left behind, giving Rizal some time so that he could save his master. But when Rizal came down he noticed that Leo he didn't seem to react, although inside he remembered this scene, which was similar 1000 years ago in the past, where he was the supreme demon, king, and together with Rosalia, he swore that he would find her no matter what happens to him or how much he has to search since the demon. King's word is supreme and when Leo could say a few words, he only asked Rizal to flee the place, but she could only hug him. Although Leo in his last moments seemed to regret, having made a kind girl become a swordsman and a vampire queen because of him, but returning with his memory of the past, where Rosalia wanted one last promise, which was that, if she became something else in the future, he must eliminate her with his sword, but at that moment Rizal seemed to be sandalwood, but still little by little Leo thought that he deserved to go to the afterlife. After all, his life without Rosalia made no sense remembering how, in the past, he told him that he couldn't promise that even so Rizal asked him to follow his sword. Since it is always there, and in the present, a Rizal was able to little by little bring back to life a Leonis who finally decided that he would live for his memories, with his beloved Rosalia. But to preserve all his memories Leo knows that he must get up and, together with his sword, Din SL Slave finish off the false goddess Eris, although luckily he was not alone in this, since he had the help of Arcelia, who was very concerned about the wound of his young companion, although Leona swore that he was fine despite having a large wound on his chest, but when the young man noticed it, he could see that he was no longer bleeding as much. This was because his vampire friend managed to control his blood and force it to return to his body, but this continued to worry his subordinates, who wanted him to take a rest. Although the young man simply said he was fine again and with a piece of Rizal dress, which she herself gave him, we see that when he placed it on his chest, that the wound ended up closing completely, but they still couldn't relax since they had a void. Goddess to eliminate, which Leo proposed to put an end to this once and for all. Of course, it would be easier with her battle partner, who did not hesitate to get up and invoke his crimson sword, which he would fight, would be the Din slave part of Leo who, upon noticing that his sword shone less intensely, knew that he had lost a large amount of his power, but still had his reserve, which clearly would not be enough to finish off the goddess, either T.E. Eris. Although we quickly see how William does not hesitate to offer all his help in combat, 
and although they were alone spirits trapped in this world, they really wanted to avenge their land and not only them. Since, in an instant, we see how a lot of souls which are from the fallen of that land wanted to provide their service for the combat so upon hearing William, again begged the protagonist with all his strength, to allow them to fight at his side. He had no choice but to leave them. Although for that, they are really helpful, Leo decided to invoke an energy sphere which curiously used souls as a source of energy. So since there were so many of them, they could be a good reserve of power for combat and, although William had no problem going to Leo, wanted to give him something more at the level of such knights. Also invoking their soldiers from the ancient army, which were skeletons with ancient armor, but although William did not understand anything, we see how the skeletons by simple contact with their souls were able to fuse for combat so that now they would truly be of help to win, which Rizzle would have the honor of guiding his fallen people, as well as having the job of protecting Leo? Who would take some time to gather the energy of all the souls and some of his own in his demonic sword? So when he saw the great demon again, Riz Yelia did not hesitate to accept the mission in front of him, promising that he would protect him. So, in addition to that, he used some of his blood to turn it into spears, which would be the weapons of his battalion, which he would not be alone, since the glorious lords would accompany them until the end. This made Rizzle prepare for the fight with great emotion, although at the same time we see the other girls who had finished hacking, some city motorcycles, which would take them directly to combat, but at that moment we see an injured Yur who wanted to be taken to combat, and although the girls were not planning to do it, seeing how she was quickly able to defend herself from a boit without problem and hearing her say how important that mission is to her Sakuya decided to approach to her, to ask them to make an effort together and for her to cover her in combat. But in turn we see that Rizzle's group had already begun to fight against numerous boids with Rizzle at the head. Who did not leave anyone alive in his path? And the other warriors were not far behind using both ice skills and powerful fire magic spells things that gave Leonis the necessary time to continue gathering all the souls necessary to win, and although he did not know if they would arrive in time, the girls were already in on the way to combat on their motorcycles, where they could quickly see some enemy boids, which made them finally use their sacred weapon to control their friend's motorcycles, so that they could shoot the enemy without problem and why not cut them in half with their katana. But Rizzle in the middle of a combat order would end up being injured by a boy to which, thanks to Hades, she did not suffer more than a simple scratch, but quickly. Elia noticed something more than her wound, since her dress did not stop getting hot from the combat. But she knew that she had a mission, so she returned to the fight in an instant since she had to do her best to fulfill her promise to take care of Leo until the end and those words were heard by the lords, who could not help but feel even more motivated since a simple little girl was giving everything, so they should not be left behind. Although when Rizzle turned to look at Leo, he noticed that all the time he had gained was paying off since Leo's soul. Power Sphere had a size considerably large, and not only that, since it did not stop growing. But such a feat was observed by Eris and of course it would not be allowed, so the goddess boy did not hesitate to begin to invoke her spells in Arya. So Leo ordered them to be careful to all his friends since a burst of fire was coming, which did not take long to arrive and in an instant the ground that our protagonists were holding was filled with a crimson fire. Although to our surprise, we see how no one ended up injured thanks to a shield that the young man managed to put them at the last second. But even so his priority was still gathering energy and luckily for him he only needed a little more power and from a distance, his friends lamented that they couldn't go faster, since the danger was more than far away and they couldn't help but feel worried about their friends of whom they still have no news, even us auras regretted not arriving on time, especially when they saw that the road was in pieces. But this was not a big problem for the end, who knew that their friends motorcycles. They had a flight mode, so they quickly managed to cross without problems, or it was like that until a void, exterminator appeared in front of them and although Relina tried to kill it immediately, her holy weapon did not even manage to scratch her body, but, to her surprise something it caused him to deviate from the path and crash to his end in a building, although in reality it was Sherry's whip, who was surprised that his enemy died for something so weak. But although he did not like it, he was obeying his master to take care of his friends, so she once again ate a donut as a prize and while the sky was dyed with exterminating voids, we see that our group of heroes did not give up at any time giving the fight of their lives to the enemy, but so much effort was rewarded by listening to Leo, tell him that he already had enough energy for his attack, which, before he could launch his attack against. Euaris once again invoked his spell of mass destruction which surprised Leo, since it was the third time he had invoked such a spell and to be one of level. Eleven was surprised that he didn't get tired, but Leo still wanted to get ahead of the attack by invoking all the power gathered to Dine Slave. But clearly the goddess would not let herself be defeated so easily. So she took a large building to finish off the young man who she had her companion at her side, who did not hesitate for a second to fly into danger to face the titanic attack of the goddess, which had no effect on her as she managed to cut the great building in two demonstrating her great determination to help her companion, 
who he couldn't help but remember his old love Rosalia, who always told him that, with her demonic sword as a gift, she could eliminate even a great god, something that would be put to the test in that moment, where Eris upon knowing his destiny, used the great holy protective barrier, something which for a second shocked Leo since he knew how strong that defense was. But since he was already in the fight, he had no choice but to give everything to win and on the road. We see how his friends approached and observed the gigantic boy who they had to win, which motivated Yur and scared Reina. But when Sakuya saw Ayur's determination she knew that they had to go straight to fight, so the end did not hesitate to accelerate while Reina joined Yur with her light cannon mode and Sakuya. He was not far behind using the power of his sword to try to destroy the mighty barrier which at first they could not do anything to. But when Ayur used her own sword and shot directly towards the goddess, we see that her attack not only managed to destroy her holy barrier but also seriously injuring the goddess, something that left Leo speechless and the girls almost lifeless. They were saved from falling off a cliff, but while the goddess, seeing that her end was near tried to convince the young man to let her live, although this did not work with Leo, who used all the power of his sword to summon a beam of mass destruction which shattered the false goddess into dust. While everyone around him could not believe what they were, seeing as a small young man with his sword ended the life of a gigantic void. But when the sunset came, the souls that in the past fell in that city could finally go to rest in peace in heaven. Although before leaving this world, William asked her not to stop training since she had become the warrior. Most powerful I had ever seen and when the fight was over, the glorious lord said goodbye and left the area and then watched as Regina finally met with Rizal. Since she had been very worried about her, just like the rest of the girls, they were happy to see them safe and quickly introduced him to Yur who they knew had fallen asleep due to fatigue. But she was the one who managed to cross the god. Very recently, but upon seeing her Leo, was quickly surprised, and at that moment we see a group of ships coming as they they had taken a long time and the group of Fenris had been sent to rescue them. So we finally see how they returned home, but Leo continued watching Yur, without being able to believe that she alone could have destroyed the holy protection, since no common hero could be such a feat. But while everyone was sleeping, Rizal showed Leo her fairy book that she recovered from her house, since it was something valuable to her and that she had been able to recover it thanks to that mission. But when she heard that the book was about the demon king Leo couldn't help but feel curiosity and while listening to his partner, read him that book with errors, he couldn't help but get offended. Hearing that he breathed fire since he wasn't a dragon Leo, still wanted to know what happened at the end of the story with the demon king and upon hearing that he died in the hands of the prince. He simply did not want to know more about his silly book, but while Rizala was taking a bath, we see that Leo speaks with his two servants, where he assures that the nefs they faced is one of the eight demon kings of whom they obey and they serve as rail, to which Blas swore to eliminate him as soon as he saw him and Sherry told her master that the young woman who managed to eliminate the goddess barrier was the king of the elves. But before continuing to give information, Sherry complained to her master ya. That he gave Rizal a dress and he never gave her clothes. So she immediately called him a fool which the young Leo did not like, but when he heard that Rizal was coming, they immediately vanished and the little dressed young woman simply couldn't endure hunger, so she attacked the young man in search of fresh blood, and at that moment we see the rest of the girls and finally, who in the database, found a secret file where there are videos about what happened to the attack on the third garden. But since it was such a heavy file, it would take time to open it and on that same night, the Queen of the Elves took the opportunity to escape from the hospital destroying the wall and running towards freedom. But the next day, when Leo and Rizal went to eat a small one together by mistake, he threw his popcorns at the head of the protagonist who, at any other time in history, would have ended up with whoever disrespected him. But we can see that time changes. People since Leona simply showed him a smile on his face. How was the video? We hope it was good. If so, please check these videos. Also, please comment down your thoughts and your suggestions for future videos. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing now to show the support to our channel. We hope to see you soon with another video right in this channel. Have a nice day.